Over the next little while, I'll show you how to take videos from your Mac and put them onto a blank DVD like this one here. While making video DVDs used to be something that was pretty easy, it's become a little more complicated in recent years. So if that's what you're trying to do, stick around. A couple of you have asked how to put your slideshow videos onto DVDs. A few months ago, I made a video that showed how you can use photos for Mac to create a dynamic slideshow presentation. I put a link to that video in the description. To be perfectly honest with you, this is something I haven't done in a long time because nowadays when I want to share videos with someone, I text it to them or I might share it on social media. Sometimes I'll share it using Dropbox or Google Drive or upload it to YouTube. The last time I put a movie file from my Mac onto a DVD, I used a product from Apple called iDVD. iDVD is Apple's DVD burning software that lets you take your videos and collect them onto your very own DVD with menus and titles similar to what you might see on a store-bought DVD. The Mac I used back then had a built-in burner. A few years later, Apple stopped including optical drives on their new Mac. That was when I picked up their USB Super Drive, which is Apple's external DVD burner. So when you asked me how to burn your movies to disc, I thought, this is gonna be easy. <laughs> and then I discovered that iDVD was discontinued back in 2011. Here's what you need. First, you need a video that you want to put onto a DVD. Next, you need a DVD burner for your Mac. If you don't have one, you can pick up Apple's USB Super Drive, which they sell for $79 US, or a more modern DVD burner like this Victic USB-C Super Drive from Amazon for around $40 US. If you go the Amazon route, be sure the drive you get is a burner and not just a DVD drive, and make sure it's compatible with Apple computers. If not, your Mac might not recognize when you connect it. After that, you need a blank disc. You can find those online or you can go to a nearby store like a Target, Best Buy, or Walmart. In my case, I had to go to four different stores before I was able to locate blank discs. In fact, I got the last spindle my store had in stock. There isn't as much demand for blank DVDs as there used to be, which means that my experience isn't really all that surprising. And you'll need one more thing some DVD authoring software. Some of you might be saying, can't I burn a DVD with macOS directly? Yes, you can. <laughs> I put a link to an article from Apple that covers the steps. However, that's not what I recommend. Burning a DVD with macOS creates a data disk that's formatted as a macOS extended volume. In other words, it's readable only on Apple computers with DVD burners. A blank DVD can hold up to 4.7 gigabytes of data. If you look online, you'll find that even the most inexpensive flash drives can hold much more than that. This flash drive can store up to 128 gigabytes of data and it can be read by Windows, Mac, and Linux computers. So if you're thinking about burning a data DVD, I recommend using a flash or a thumb drive instead. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to need some DVD authoring software. However, before we talk about that, I'm going to click on my Mac's background to select the finder, and then I'll update finder preferences. I want my Mac to show CDs and DVDs as icons on the desktop if they're loaded. Over the last couple of weeks, I took a look at several DVD authoring apps and here's what I learned. There isn't a ton of demand for apps that create DVDs nowadays, which means that the apps you'll find tend to look and feel a bit outdated. It also means that there aren't too many choices when trying to find good software. If you're only gonna make the occasional DVD, then I recommend taking a look at free or open source software instead of buying something. There are several free options out there, I looked at Burn. If you're gonna make DVDs on a more regular basis, then you'll wanna consider spending some money for an app, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at Burn. I went to sourceforge.net and searched for Burn. I was able to download it for free. The install consisted of downloading the file, opening it, and then dragging the Burn app icon into my applications folder. After I opened the Burn app, I clicked the Video tab, named my disc, and left the setting at DVD Video. Afterward, I dragged my video into the Burn window. The app alerted me that my file was incompatible and offered to convert it to MPEG for me. I clicked Convert, and it converted a copy of my video to a standard definition MPEG file, which it saved to the folder I chose. In my case, that's the desktop, although you can let it save to anywhere you like. Then I selected the NTSC region because I'm in the US. Before I clicked the Burn button, I needed to insert my blank disk into my burner, and when macOS prompts to ask what action I'd like to take, I click ignore. Finally, I clicked burn. After several minutes, the DVD finished burning and my Mac opened it in the DVD player app. As you can see, the DVD menu is simple <laughs> and it's not customizable at all. Although you can go into the burn app settings and choose not to use a theme. Depending on what you're trying to do, this might be a good option. If you'll be making DVDs with any kind of regularity, then a paid app might be what you need. Paid apps literally buy you tech support and can give you some confidence that the company you paid 
will release updates from time to time. The paid apps I looked at are Wondershare DVD Creator, Sysdem DVD Burner, and Toast Titanium. Each of them was able to burn my slideshows using the standard DVD video format without issue. I'll show you each of these apps briefly. You can, of course, click the timestamps in the description to skip ahead. Let's start with Wondershare DVD Creator. I went to dvdcreator.wondershare.com and downloaded a free trial of this app. The download is an app installer with a simple wizard that puts the DVD Creator app on your Mac. They also have a Windows version too. When I opened the app, I clicked the DVD Video Disc button. Then I saw a pop-up ad for Wondershare Uni Converter, which I dismissed. Right away, you can see the difference between this app and Burn. It has an intuitive interface that lets you select the videos or pictures you'd like to include on the disc. If I click the pencil next to the video, Wondershare will ask for permission to access files on my Mac. Assuming I grant those permissions, I get options to do some mild trimming and editing before I add it to my disc. Next, we can select a menu for our DVD. The app includes over 100 built in menu templates, although only three are available during the free trial. I selected a menu and clicked to preview it. If I didn't want a menu, I'd go back to the menu tab and scroll all the way to the bottom and choose not to include one. Back to the preview. When I'm happy with my selection, I'll proceed to the burn section. I'm going to leave it at burn to disc. Let's label this as vacay. My burner is already selected. My TV standard is NTSC. And before I click the burn button, I need to insert my blank DVD into the burner. When macOS prompts me to ask what action I'd like to take, I click ignore. You might remember that from last time. Now I'll click burn. Wondershare advises me that because I'm in a trial, it will add a watermark to my DVD. That's okay with me for now. I'll just click continue. The burn process takes a few minutes. When complete, Wondershare ejects the disc and offers us to burn another copy, which is a nice option if we need to make multiples of the same DVD. I don't need that right now, so I'll click finish. When we insert the disc, we'll see our video project has a watermark on it, which is what we expect. Let's take a look at Sysdem DVD burner next. I went to sysdem.com and downloaded a free trial of the DVD burner. The install was pretty simple. I opened the DMG file, then dragged the sysdem app to my applications folder, and then ejected the sysdem DVD burner image from my disk. When the app launches, there's a pop-up alert. Let's close this alert. The user interface is similar to what we see with Wondershare DVD Creator, a four-phase process. Although this app will only allow us to add videos to our disc. Like before, I'll drag the video slideshow to this window. If I click the pencil next to the video, I get options similar to what we saw with Wondershare. When I click the menu, I see that there are 34 built-in menu templates to choose from, or I can check a box to not include a menu. Next, I'll preview. After several seconds, the preview loads. Now let's proceed to the burn section. In the burn settings, I'll name my DVD, select my DVD standard, and set the number of copies I'd like to make of this DVD. Before I click the burn button, I need to insert my blank DVD into the burner. You know what happens next. Click ignore. Now I click the burn button. Sysdem informs me that because I'm in a trial, it will only burn half the video or up to five minutes. I'm okay with that for now and we'll click continue. Sysdem burns the disc, which takes several minutes for my short slideshow. When the burn finishes, Sysdem ejects the DVD from the drive. You know, I couldn't help but notice that Wondershare DVD Creator and Sysdem DVD Burner seem to share a lot in common. If you take a look at each app side by side, it seems that one of these apps has taken quite a bit of inspiration from the other. Now, I don't know if they have some sort of agreement that allows one app to use components from the other. Maybe they do. It's also possible that they're each using a separate code base under the hood and that one of the apps is just borrowing its look and feel from the other. And I suppose it's possible that they each manage to evolve nearly identical user interfaces without seeing their competitors work at all. I just don't know. What I can tell you is that based on my limited use of each app, Wondershare DVD Creator seems like the more complete and refined of the two. A bit of Googling showed me that Wondershare was established six years before Sysdem. You decide for yourself. Now we'll take a look at Toast Titanium. I had to review Toast as part of the paid app offerings. I used to use it a long time ago, and I'm glad that it's still in the world. There are two versions of Toast available from Roxio today, Toast 20 Titanium, and Toast 20 Pro. I had planned to give you a tour of Toast as part of this video so you could see it in action and judge for yourself whether you wanted to use it. But as I dug into it more, I ran into a couple of red flags and think it's best that you steer clear of it for now. Red flag number one, Roxio doesn't offer a free trial. A free trial gives you a way to ensure that the app you want will work if you buy it. Red flag number two, the installation requires a system extension that will not be compatible with the next version of macOS. According to Apple, system extensions work 
work in the background to extend the functionality of your Mac. I put a link to an article about system extensions in the video description below. In all likelihood, Roxio will update Toast and release a new version of it that's compatible with macOS Ventura in the near future. However, I tend to shy away from apps that need such deep access to my Mac's kernel, and I think it would be a bummer if you buy an app and then a few weeks later not be able to use it until the developer updates it again. So for now, I'll not include Titanium in this overview. And for the record, I did use it to burn a DVD and it worked just fine. So if you'd like me to make a video that shows you what it does, let me know in the comments. Here's my recommendation for when it comes to burning video DVDs using your Mac in 2022. First, if you're only going to burn DVDs from time to time, or if you'll be burning lots of DVDs and won't be using a DVD menu, go with a free and open source option like Burn. If you need to make DVDs that use some sort of DVD menu, then a paid app like Wondershare DVD Creator is what you'll need. If you go with Wondershare, spring for the lifetime or multi-user license. That's just a better deal. Drop your tech questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.